Hello world, Dino Mega here. In this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to work up the quest system from Blueprint using the example quest we created in the last video. I suggest doing that video first if you haven't. If you're integrating this quest system with the dialogue system or crafting a unique player quest experience, you'll likely want manual control over certain aspects of quest progression. This could include showing quest window, accepting or completing a quest, or even advancing objectives. In cases like this where manual control is needed, you'll handle this from the Blueprint side. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. For those who prefer to dive into an example, take a look at the UI-driven quest in the demo world. This quest is handled entirely in the UI, and under the surface it uses all these functions and events that I'm about to show you. The blueprint for this widget can be found in the Demo UIs folder. While working with the quest system from Blueprint, we're going to be interacting with our player components. You can find these in the Blueprint's Components folder. Our player controller component is where our indicators, interaction, and user interface are handled, and this is the component that we added to our player controller to install the quest system. The player state component is where all the data for our quest is managed for the player. And this component will be added for you by the player controller one. 99% of the time you'll be interacting with one of these components. A good place to start is in our player controller since we already have a reference to the quest system controller component from within it since that's where we added it. So let's open our BP underscore third person controller. What I want to do is first accept our quest when we press a key and I'm going to use the Q key for this. Now let's drag out a reference to our AC underscore quest system underscore player controller from the components section and from it search for quest player state helper. This is a reference to our player state component. From this reference drag off and select the accept quest event. For our input enter our quest row name and if you recall our quest row name is something we defined when we first added our quest to the data table. For our example quest we simply named it example so we enter example here. If you named it something else or if you're working with a different quest you'll enter the row name for your quest here instead. And this check available boolean we can leave false for now. These booleans are on most of these events and when enabled will validate that the state can change before it handles it. Leaving these as false will just bypass this check. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Press play and then press the Q key. Your player should accept the quest right away. Easy right? Now if nothing happens and you most likely don't have the right player controller selected in your game mode for this level or the reference you are using is not valid. Do not continue with this video until you sort that out. Now let's say you're working on another blueprint that doesn't have access to this variable. You can either get a reference to it through your controller or you can also get the component directly by calling get player controller then from it drag off and get the player state then from that reference you'll just call get component by class then select your AC quest system player state component Plugging this in where our previous reference was will give us the exact same result the only difference is how we're getting this reference to this component for both ways it's the same component as you can see it still works now I'm just going to convert back to the way we had it because that's a little bit easier to read go ahead and duplicate the key binding then set it to use the E key instead let's also duplicate our variable reference for this one I want to call the ready to turn in event, which as the name suggests will make our quest ready to turn in. Just like the accept quest, enter your quest row name and leave the boolean false. Then press play and give your key binding a try. When you press E, your quest should automatically jump to the ready to turn in state. And if we bounce between Q and E, you'll see it switching back and forth. Duplicate the key binding and reference again, and then set the key binding to use the F key this time. For this one, we're going to call the complete quest event, and this one will complete our quest. We have a new input for the reward index on this one, and when you complete a quest that has a choice item reward, this is how the reward is selected. For quests you're calling the complete quest manually on, you really shouldn't be using choice rewards, so for now let's leave it at negative one. Just like the accept quest, enter your quest row name, press play and give it a try. And we can see when we press the F key it does work. Now before we continue, let's try out this boolean we keep leaving as false. If you set it to true on this event, it will check to make sure that the quest is ready to turn in before it is completed. Press play again and this time press the key binding while the quest is not in the ready to turn in state. And nothing should happen. But if you put the quest in the ready to turn in state with our E key, then press your F key again to complete it, it should complete. And this is what that boolean is verifying. We have this since we can let our player progress the stage of a quest through the UI. And we can't trust the client at the same time. So we optionally have a way to validate the state if we need. You can also change a quest state to any state using the change quest state event. Keep in mind using this does not offer the optional validation step. There are also shortcuts to put quests in the not available, failed, and locked states. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's all kinds of little functions in here for you to discover. Now up until this point we have worked with setting our quest state. Next I want to show you how to get the current quest state. Duplicate our key binding and set it to T and this time call the get quest state function. For this one we supply our quest name as an input and as an output we'll get the enum for the state it's currently in. From the enum select enum to string and then connect it to a print string node. When you press play and then press T you'll see your current quest state shown in the top left corner. 
change your state, and then press it again. As you see, the value changes. This is great when we need to get the quest state on demand, but if we want to get notified instead when the quest state changes, we use the event dispatches for that. And something like this we usually do on begin play. So let's create that node and from it get our references. This time convert the player state component into a validated get by right clicking on it and selecting convert to validated get. Doing this ensures that our player state component is valid before we continue and try to bind into it. Since we're calling this from begin play, there is a chance we try to use this variable before it's ready. Remember our player controller is the one who adds this player state component. This is also handled on begin and play. For where we are working, it shouldn't be a problem, but if you're working in somewhere else where it is a problem, you can set a little delay before calling this, and that usually resolves the issue. Using our output on the validated get call, drag off and search for bind quest state. As you can see, we have two different bind ones. One has the prefix UI, and the one with the prefix is the one that runs last and on the client in multiplayer. Now, depending on if you're working from the client or the server, will determine which one you should use. Now, for our use case, let's just use the UI one. Now, from this binding, create a new custom event and give it a name. As you can see from the event that it created, it already defines our input, and this data is what the quest system will tell your side whenever it calls this event. So let's hook this up to a print text using a format text node to see how it looks in action. Press play and give it a try. As you can see, when we progress our quest through our key bindings, we see our print occur automatically. And this is all happening through that event dispatcher. When we get a minute, make sure you open up the player state component and check out all the different event dispatchers that are available to you. Now I like to have my event begin plays at the top of the blueprint, so I'm going to move it up here. Next I'll show you how to progress our objectives. Duplicate our key binding, and for this one I'm going to set it to 1. Duplicate our references, and this time call the complete objective event. For this event, we supply our quest row name and the objective index that we want to complete. Remember, our objectives is an array, and the first element in our array has an index of 0, so our first objective index is 0. The actor field is how we let the quest system know what actor this completion objective is related to, if it requires unique actors. And the last variable is our count increment, which I'll show you in a second. For now, press play and accept the quest, and then press your 1 key to see what happens. As you notice, it does not complete the quest, but it does progress it, and this is because our increment value is only 1 and we require three interactions to complete this objective. So we did not tell it to complete it all, but rather just once. And if we wanted to complete all three at once, we could set this value to three or higher. When we try it this time, we see it completes them all at once. I'm going to duplicate our event, and we'll use this one to complete our second travel to objective. And since this is our second objective, our objective index is going to be one. Let's also set this one to use our two key. Go ahead and give it a try. And that's how easy it is to progress objectives. Now let me show you how to show our quest window from Blueprint. For this, let's duplicate our key binding. And I'm going to use the Y key for this one. And this time, since we're dealing with the UI, we don't use our player state component. Remember, UI was one of the key aspects of the controller component. So we just need our controller reference for this one. From it, drag off and select Show Quest Window. Then just input your quest row name and give it a try. We can show this window at any point, and depending on the state of the quest, we'll control our ability to perform the various actions within it, like accepting and completing. In addition to showing quest window, I also include a way to spawn those little alerts you see at the top of the screen. This is also through our player controller component using the show alert function. Enter some text, select a color, then give it a try. And when you spam these alerts a bunch of times, they will stack. But keep in mind the small ones work independently of the large ones, so good timing is important. There's also a quest event you can use to show alerts. Let's expand on this last one. Instead of showing a custom message, let's show the title to our quest. And we can get our quest title or any data we save in our data table for our quest using our get quest data function from our player state component. And your quest row name is the input, and the output will include the quest structure with your quest data. From this structure, drag off and select break. Then locate the quest text part and drag off from there and select break. This will expose the title pin. Connect this and give it a try. Now when you press this key binding, you should see your quest title shown in your alert. If you want to go even further with this, you can also plug in the quest current state, and then show it all in the alert using the format text node. And we can just duplicate what we created above for our get quest state and plug it in down here. Press play and give it a try. And when you press it, you should see your quest title and the current quest state in the alert. Now hopefully this video shed some light on the subject of working in Blueprint. Remember, this is just the start. There's a lot of functions built into these components. So make sure you spend some time to explore the functions and the documentation. Thanks for watching and good luck with your game.